Hello and welcome. Today, we are going to discuss Lord Manodou and her fatal weapon, the hyperfrequency. She ingeniously combined the swift stroke rate of top sprinters with the efficient stroke economy of leading middle distance swimmers. This unique combination allowed her to execute twice as many movements as Ian Thorpe over a distance of 400 meters, averaging just under 50 strokes per length. This remarkable ability didn't hinder her from breaking world records in freestyle swimming events ranging from 200 to 1500 meters. In this video, we'll explore the two factors that enabled her to sustain such a rapid cadence over varying distances, her swimming technique, the highly effective two-beat kick, her catch, and the evolution of her technique over the years. Lor Manodu boasts nine international medals, including the 400 meters freestyle title in the 2004 Olympics. She clinched 62 French championship titles, with 155 in the 200, 402 in the 400 meters, and 8 minutes 18 seconds in the 800 meters freestyle. Additionally, she was crowned the World Female Swimmer of the Year in 2007, holding world records from 200 up to 1500 meters freestyle. Let's start by discussing her ultra-high cadence comparable to that of top sprinters. While many sprinters employ an intense kick, Manodou uses a light two-beat kick to conserve energy, because generally, such a high cadence equates to a high kick rate in order to maintain the body's horizontality, to secure balance, and to prevent the feet from sinking. In short, to preserve the line of the body, in practical terms, when she presses here, on her right foot, causing her left arm to enter the water and initiate a rotation. Through this downward pressure, she turns and engages her body to the left side, with the left arm forward in order to glide through the water more effectively, positioning herself slightly on the side. And this gives her the time to engage her arm forward, even though it goes quite quickly, she still dislocates her shoulder. Because in the end, if she was not using a two-beat kick, she would indeed be employing a significantly more energy-consuming kick. More importantly, she wouldn't be able to achieve such a high arm frequency, because at a certain point, her cardiovascular system would reach its limits due to the high frequency, which is extremely taxing in cardiovascular terms. It is necessary to keep up the pace, of course. One cannot have both legs and arms going all out simultaneously, especially in mid-distance races. This kind of swim, it would be possible to get this by swimming with a pool boy, but we wouldn't have the advantage of working on and improving your two-beat kick. What's the plan to succeed this? To engage the arm far forward. In fact, you must begin with a low stroke frequency with high amplitude, catching far and forward, pushing further back and accelerating water. This provides speed, and the fact of becoming increasingly aligned in the water, more and more horizontal in relation to the surface, significantly reduces resistance. Therefore, at a certain point, the two-beat kick establishes itself naturally. Because if today you are striving to emulate the same coordination as Laura Manodou with the leg kicks when the arm enters the water, alternating right and left with the opposing leg, it is evident that this method will consume a significant amount of energy and consequently lead to a gradual decrease in your speed. Yes, one can focus for a time to do this. However, it won't be on an efficient freestyle. The optimal approach is to be patient. It likely will take several months. I have students who achieve this after 6, 9, even 12 months. The other factor that enabled her to swim at such a high frequency was her arm recovery. She sent her arms well ahead of her head, which enabled her to maintain her displacement axis and alignment from head to toes with greater ease. And so, if we examine the arm recovery phase here, we see that she releases first the shoulder, then the elbow, and finally the hand. It sounds quite simple when explained this way. Upon releasing all these, she then brings his arm back over here. The elbow and the hand move together, passing vertically of the shoulder simultaneously. And upon completing that, Upon achieving the first half of the recovery that takes more time than the second half, she will hurl her arm at a considerably faster pace with her hand being the first to enter the water, and there, it was in slow motion. If I revert it back to normal speed, this is what it looks like. Arm release and boom. Arm release and boom. We can clearly see that it is indeed coordinated with the acceleration that occurs under the water. This implies that at the beginning of the arm recovery, there's the catch. At the end of the arm recovery, there is indeed an acceleration and pushing of the water towards the back. Therefore. The two-beat kick and his hyperfrequency did not allow her to fully put to the side. That doesn't imply that she was totally incapable of it when she was swimming at a slower pace with higher amplitude. That, it's sure. Well, in his races, it allowed her to do just what was necessary to engage her shoulder forward and position the hollow of her elbow towards the bottom, thereby effectively achieving this catch, before propelling water directly backwards towards the feet to propel herself. And what will determine your optimal stroke rate? It is your ability to sustain your swimming technique. Because if you amplify your tempo and your technique begins to go out of control, at best, you exhaust yourself and at worst, your speed decreases. While I'm discussing this video, I wanted to talk about arm entries, about the bubbles or not bubbles. What we observe when I slow down the video is the formation of bubbles as her hand enters the water. 
More bubble is simply the presence of air, and air implies a reduction in proportion, leading to decreased efficiency, whereas fewer bubbles as shown in this video implies hardest water, leading to a rise in propulsion and greater amplitude. In short, it leads to faster swimming. Therefore, you ought to be cautious of the arm entries, ensuring that the fingers go first, then the forearm, followed by the elbow, before engaging far ahead. Of course, depending on the cadence you wish to put, and ultimately draw the water towards yourself. So if you're also looking for that famous two-beat kick in energy saving mode, let me know in the comments. I've also included some exercises in the description, such as the magic palm exercise, which will help you to tip much more to the side, and I wish you good progress, a smooth glide, in short, a good freestyle, and I'll see you soon.